cuối đời là khi mẹ tôi còn sống thì mẹ tôi luôn luôn nhớ tôi về một cái món ăn always reminded me of my dad to nhập her village và mẹ tôi đã trói tôi vào một cái món nợ tình cảm đối với my mother bound me to that emotional debt because of her three children and the only daughter who has followed her career in journalism and her love for literature My mother always told me, write something about Nyapa village. You've got to write about the death of the village, the flower village. It's my homeland and also yours. I've written many things so far, but none of them about Nyapa village. It's a lifetime debt, and I don't know when I will pay it. This was my wife's homeland, Ling's mother's homeland. I came here in 1954 when the economy was mainly agriculture and Nopha was a flower-growing village. Each house was separated with a garden surrounded with banana trees and hibiscus flowers. Today, houses stand next to one another and people live and fight for the separating wall. Today, there isn't a meter of land left. People fight for it and grab it all. Those who had land sold it. Bouts of land fever exploded. People ran after money, selling land and collecting gold. This piece of land used to belong to my mother's family, including that road we've just passed. There used to be just one family. Today there are so many. I haven't been here for dozens of years, even though I live very nearby. This is the only garden left. This garden belongs to the cooperative and Mr. Tork's family are contracted to use it and pay tax every year. In the old days, over there was a pond where our grandfathers grew lotus and widow trees. And in that lotus pond, our grandparents made tea in a very fancy way. At night, they opened lotus petals, put tea leaves inside and closed them. At dawn, they got the tea out, and it was infused with lotus fragrance. And they used the dewdrops from the lotus leaves as water for their tea. That's how our grandparents drank tea. The flower village was almost the only source that provided flowers for Hanoi. The flower trade lasted throughout the 20th century, until the beginning of the 90s when it began to dwindle. If only we could have kept this village as it was in the 60s or 70s, it would be wonderful. I remember in my childhood it was still very beautiful. At the entrance to the village was a kapok tree, a village communal house, a pond and flower gardens on both sides. Houses nestled among flower gardens, unlike today, where they stand next to one another. My mother's childhood memory of this village must have been a thousand times more wonderful than mine because she was born at the beginning of the century. I can't even begin to imagine how beautiful this village was then. Ông 
My grandfather had a big flower garden, and my mother used to play music and recite poems with her friends there. I had an uncle who died very young. He loved poetry and used to write poems. He used to pick fallen petals, bury them, cry for them, and make poems about them. Very romantic. I think this land created that kind of spirit. It must have helped create more elegant people. Mokha village epitomized the elegance and romance of the Hanoians. Any description of Hanoi would certainly include the 36 streets of the old quarter and the Nhok Ha flower village. As for the old quarter, there is very little left today. New buildings are mixed with old ones. It's a total architectural mess. As for Nhok Ha village, there's nothing left. The end of the flower trade in Nhok Ha has helped other flower-growing villages in the outskirts of Hanoi to flourish. But the village had a history of several centuries and still lives on in people's memories, literature and poetry. There will never be a flower village like Nhok Ha. It's natural for the new to replace the old. However, things that have existed for a long time have absorbed not just the spirit of heaven and earth, but also of humans, their soul and their love. Therefore, I think it'll take a very long time for a new flower village to become like Nyap Ha. People from the countryside have to come to the city to find work, and this has created an overloaded situation. Hanoi's development has been too slow to meet the demands of today. It seems Hanoi wasn't prepared for such a fast pace of life. Hanoi used to be quiet and slow.
thành phố Hà Nội thì bây giờ hay là đô thị hóa từ một cái nước Hà Nội today has a lot of problems as it has been urbanized from an agricultural base. 15% original Hanoians account for only 15 to 20%. The rest come from other areas, from the countryside and from the world. They have brought with them their rural lifestyle to Hanoi. People raise chickens and pigs as if they were in the countryside. Many French villas are divided and shared by several families and cooking is done in the same room. This is the problem, but it will change as we modernize. But I wonder if the rural lifestyle brought anything good to the city. Perhaps it makes people look after one another. Perhaps it helps combine our traditional values with today's modernization. Hanoi lacks greenery. We can't say humans are part of nature anymore. Nature has been lost in a city with its skyscrapers, apartment blocks and traffic. In modern life, people like to have their own corner where they can be away from material pleasure, from the noise of the streets in order to find themselves, or to have some moments for their spiritual life. And I can't find any corner in Hanoi now. In the old days, life was stagnant and sluggish. It was impossible to be creative. And there was also starvation and poverty. Therefore, economic reforms had to be made. No one wants to return to the old days. But the pressure of today's life is awful.
And people have to pay dearly for today's abundance, sometimes even with their own happiness. I often think like this. People today don't even have time for reflection. I can't imagine how people will live in the 21st century. They may get what they wish for, may have great material success, but I think people will be very lonely. I don't like the Western model. For example, they say in the next few years you'll be able to live in one room with every convenience. Press a button and everything will appear in front of your eyes. You won't even need to have human contact. You won't need to go to the office. I'm frightened of such a life. I couldn't bear it. If we humans don't need one another, don't need contact, we're not living a human life. I'd like to introduce a vice chairman of the traditional poetry club and very enthusiastic to our club. And I'd also like to introduce poet Zung Tuyet Lan, who has published two volumes and who is the daughter of the poet Zung Hue. I wonder if people are now thinking of preserving what little is left of the old Hanoi. For example, in my village, the tomb of Mr. Hoang Phuc Tuong, who established this Nok Ha area, was demolished to make way for a new hotel. The vestige and memory of a man who served Nok Ha has been wiped out. So how can we educate our children about the history of the land they are living in? I think Vietnamese youth today know more about Chinese history than Vietnamese history. We shouldn't blame them. The fault lies with the older generation. We don't know how to educate them, how to bring history to them. Take my niece, for example. Her grandfather has written about the history of Nyong Ha, but she doesn't care about it. She doesn't read it, doesn't know about Nyong Ha's history or what Hanoi is like. I like math, physics, and chemistry best. Generally speaking, I don't like social subjects because I'm better with natural sciences. 
Don't you have just a little inspiration for literature and history? Literature? Yes, but not history. Granddad likes history and knows a lot about history. So did your grandma and my brother. Yes, your brother as well. Do you know that Grandad has written about the history of Nyoha? Have you read it? Mm, not yet. Your grandma was born in Nyoha. Your father was born in Nyoha. Your brother and you were born in Nyoha. Do you know anything about Nyoha village? Yes, but very little. How little? Tell me. I don't know. Tell me how much you know about Nyoha village. Nếu thế hệ trẻ đó với những cái sự hiểu biết và những cảm nhận So will young people love Hanoi enough to bring better things to it when they're armed with such little knowledge and the understanding of the place they are living in? Lại cho cái Hà Nội này một cái gì tốt đẹp hơn không? Họ có Will they think of preserving Hanoi's identity? dáng vẻ riêng gì của nó hay không? That is a concern, a worry as we look to the future and rely on the young generation. When is Hanoi most beautiful? In winter. But during the day, when is it most beautiful? Midnight, like this. Hanoians have always enjoyed going out at night. Our grandfathers used to go to a cabaret till one or two o'clock in the morning. Then they had chicken soup or strolled around before they went home. I've never imagined Hanoi as a woman. People always compare Hanoi with a girl, but I think of it as a man. That man could wear an elegant suit, a handkerchief in his pocket, a felt hat on his head when it's neither rainy nor sunny, carry a walking stick. It means he has a lot of unnecessary things, but without them, it wouldn't be him. He's so old-fashioned. <laughs> There's only one Nyapa and one Hanoi. That Hanoi, that Nyapa, can't be defined in space or time, but can only be felt by love and in the heart. I believe if the Hanoian spirit still lives on in some people, Hanoi will be preserved and will survive. Grandpa, let me switch it down into this narrative 